It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I am taking a look at Heir to the Pharaoh. And Heir to the Pharaoh, here the Pharaoh has passed away and he has decreed that he will not be leaving all his belongings to his children. Instead, he will leave them to his pets. And so... In the game, two players, and the game is two players only, one player will represent the dogs, the other player will represent the cats, and you will be fighting over the kingdom uh, with a few different mechanisms, largely bidding. Let me give you an overview of how the game works, and then I'll tell you what I thought of it. So here's what the game might look like set up and ready to begin. Uh, the game is played over eight rounds. At the end of those eight rounds, whoever has the most victory points is the winner of the game. We've got the cat player and the dog player. Each player has a deck of bidding cards, which are numbered one through ten. And then a deck of special animal cards, which they might draw from and give you some special powers, one-time shots. We have also over here placed the uh, God cards, which are going to be uh, auctioned off every round. And over here, the monuments, along with uh, the little monument standee for the one selected, which is the one right there, okay? And then you're ready to begin. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how this goes. I won't go into every rule, but uh, just give you an idea of the flow of the game. And once you've seen one round, the other ones are pretty much all the same thing, okay? So, the way it works is we are going to be doing each round in two phases. Bid phase, then the uh, resolution phase where the gods are triggered from the one all the way up to the seven. And they're all right here, okay? So, bidding phase goes like this. You flip over the top god card. If it's the very first one of the round, it also gets this token, which means you get a souped up power below the regular power here, all right? Just be aware of that. And then each player bids on that card. The way you bid is you take your whole hand of cards here, you decide how strongly you want that, you play a card, your opponent plays a card, you both reveal that card, I played a seven, they played a five, I win it. I set it aside for now. And then my discard, I place it somewhere, they do the same thing, we reveal the next one, and do it again, okay? So, let's say that we've all done that a few times, and this player won this one, this one, and this player won uh, these three, okay? The Pharaoh card actually goes over here, and I'll explain that in just a sec, but each player would have bid to it secretly. So there we go, and each player has also obviously uh, spent some of those cards bidding. I'll just flip a few over so that they are spent, okay? And now comes a second phase where we resolve the gods. So I'll take you through them. The number one god lets you take the token set aside over here and the little monument standee and put it anywhere you want on this board. That is what the number one god does. And so this player is going to place it uh, here and they are going to put the token on it. Done. Be aware if you place it on one of these tokens here and you probably want to then you get one of those animal cards, okay? So why not let's do that, because it would be foolish not to. So this player would do that, they earn one of these cards into their hand. Second card says you get to aim and flip over to your side that very token that was just placed. And so it's the god, it's the uh, dog that has won this side, they're going to leave it just like that. Perfect. Number three card says that you get to claim the active monument card. The active monument card being right here, this player would earn it, and they would get victory points based on how many of that kind they've got now. If it's the only one they've got, they get a single victory point, and that is the dog, so they get one point on the score track. If they had already had two of those, and that was the third obelisk, they get five points instead. So the more of the same kind, the better. After that comes the number four, Ra here, and that one lets you add a uh, token to the current sun symbol. The sun symbols go here around the outside, and at the end of the game you are going to get bonus points based on the longest continuous chain of those 
that you've got, okay? After the four comes the number five, and this one lets you draw one of those animal cards. And so since this player won, they get another one of these. They get an animal card. The number six is the pharaoh. The pharaoh is a little different. The pharaoh does nothing right now and only triggers every two rounds. So during the next round, the pharaoh will trigger. There will be two cards there at that point, of course, and we would flip over both of them and the highest total would be the winner. So that is eight to my four. That player wins. They're going to get two things. A number of bonus points based on what corner of the table we're looking at here. So the first time this happens, three, then four, then five, then the final time, six victory points. And also, they get to claim a level on the pyramid. And at the end of the game, whoever claimed the most levels on the pyramid, and the pyramid just gets built up and built up like this, that player is going to get seven victory points. So quite possibly a lot of points coming from the bonuses and then the pyramid itself at the end of the game, okay? And after that, uh, the pharaoh, which is the number six, comes the number seven, which is not actually, uh, no one bits on this, it's just given to whoever won the fewest gods, and it's just a reset card. It tells you what you need to do. The first thing you have to do is the cards you bid are going to be exchanged with your opponent. So if you're doing particularly bad, the idea is your opponent now has your great cards, and you, um, you have your opponent's great cards, rather, and they have your bad cards, okay? That's the first thing. Second thing is you move the sun marker here to the next spot. So if we were actually here, it would just come there, track the rounds. After that, you choose a new monument over here. And so uh, you can either flip a new one if you're the one that has this uh, card, or just switch one down here. And then you would add a new one of these tokens with the little arrows and put the little standee on, uh, on it right there, so you're ready to go. And then you are going to shuffle up all of the god cards here, except for the last one that goes on the bottom. Shuffle them up, place them there, flip the top one over, put that superpower token on it, and you are ready to play the next round. This is going to continue, as I said, through all the rounds. At the end of the game, you're going to get some other victory points. They come from the pyramid. That is seven victory points. Longest continuous chain. You are going to get two points apiece. So if this is the cat's longest continuous chain, two, four, six victory points. And then finally, these tokens sitting on the board with the monuments, you are trying to get uh, patterns, alignments of those. If they point at another monument, so let's say the dog has both of these, and this one has two arrows, one points off the board, so that's nothing, but the other one points at this obelisk, that obelisk says three points, that would earn three victory points, okay? Also, if you're pointing at the pyramid, so let's say instead of being here, it would be here, and let's say it's one of these, then instead of earning uh, uh, points based on another monument, if you are pointing at the pyramid itself, you earn the points printed on your very own monument. You could even combine those two things. So if this is like so, I would earn for this place three points for pointing at this, and I would earn two points for pointing at the pyramid based on my very own monument, okay? And that's basically it. Uh, again, um, there's a few other complications. As I said, all the cards have a secondary little souped up power, but that's an overall view of how the game operates. Most victory points is the winner of the game. This is a game that I was really ready to love. I, I really liked the uh, concept of the game when I first heard about it. It sounded like it did something original and new with a two player game. And I really loved the look of the game, so I was on board, but where I was hoping to get an amazing game, I merely got an okay one. You know, it's a game that has a lot of flaws for me. Uh, here are the things I, I wasn't really uh, thrilled about with the game. Uh, first of all, the game's very repetitive, so the, the eight rounds you play all feel largely the same. You know, you are doing the same things in the eighth round as you are doing in the first round. And... 
there's no sense of escalation there, no sense of growth. Uh, secondly, the game is very convoluted for really how simple it is. It's kind of a beast to teach the game. It's a game that I kind of would dread teaching now again. You know, I've taught it a couple of times. I, I kind of don't want to teach it anymore. It's not that it's difficult to grasp necessarily, but there are so many little rules for how simple the game is, you know. So I have an issue with that. The God cards, there's at least one of them that is just not exciting, you know. The whole place the token with one character, but then aim it and flip it over to your side with the other character, that's just clunky, you know. And I understand why they're doing that, to hope to, by taking that one, if the other player took the two, deny them some points based on what you're pointing at and all of that. I get that, but it's just not fun, you know? It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this uh, to hope to hurt you, but... And so winning the one feels very anticlimactic, you know? It's just not... Uh, the, the powers there on those God's cards are clunky. I wish it would have been uh, a little more splashy, maybe... Uh, recombine some of those I don't know it just doesn't it's not thrilling going through the bidding of some of those characters and then the final issue I have is actually an issue on the board right here so I'm just gonna dump this out and show you the board starts over here this is where you're supposed to start and then it goes around there's an eight on the corner and it goes all the way around all the way around and there's a 40 over here and then it wraps around but it, when you count the dots back to the 8 over on the corner, it doesn't actually add up to that. There are two spots missing. And that wouldn't be an issue normally if you did not wrap around the board. But I do. And I've, I, I have in all the games I've played. So I'm not sure how that wasn't uh, noticed. It's not a huge deal. If I'm ahead, then I win. But it's just a weird graphical issue I have with that board. So, again, it's a lot of little things that uh, make me think of lack of polish, you know. And, and, and if those things were tackled and polished and maybe the game was revisited, I would be a lot happier with it, perhaps. As it is right now, I find it merely to be an okay game. One that I thought was cool and had some interesting... Uh, even even clever aspects to it, but nothing uh, as cool as I was hoping, you know. So it's not one I'll be hanging on to. And um, uh, again, I um, wish it was a little bit more interesting, but the repetitiveness, the clunkiness, and then some of those little weird graphical errors just are enough to, to knock it off that list for me. A merely okay game that is heir to the Pharaoh. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.